G'day all, it's Colin from PC TLC and thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to be looking at Run2 Lite 20.04.1. Run2 is a distro that comes out of Russia and it's based on Ubuntu and I could only think that that's the reason why it starts with the letter R, uh, putting the Russia and the Ubuntu together and calling it Run2. Now some people might call it Ubuntu or Runtu. I just call it Ubuntu, so that's what I've always called it. So I'm just going to call this Runtu. Uh, just consider it my Aussie slang. <laughs> so let's check out Runtu Lite. So this is Runtu. Website is in Russian. So let's change that to English. Let's translate that. Runtu, fast and light Linux in Russian. So the release of 64-bit distribution kit run to Lite 2004.1 built on the package base of Focal Fossa. The assembly has a basic set of custom software that can be installed on a hard disk. And then you've got the download. This is the download page. I've downloaded the run to Lite 20.04-1. You have your download options here. So we have the run to Lite ISO 20.04.1. 789 megabytes. I said 753, close enough. So let's have a look at Runtu Lite. So let's get started with Runtu. So now we have, um, it's in Russian by the looks of it. Uh, what do we need to do here? Maybe press F1 or something. Not F1, F2. Uh, we got an option for English here. So F2, uh, it's Arrow up for English. Try Lubuntu without installing. So it's based on Lubuntu. Interesting. So that is the live desktop of Runtu Lite. That's install. So English, English for me. English US. So I've waited for a little while for updates and software. Nothing seems to be happening there. So I'm not sure, maybe that's a work in progress, I'm not sure. Let's continue. Erase disk and install run to. And that is the install complete. We'll restart now and log in to run to Lite. Run to Lite 20.04. So this is the desktop of run to Lite and it looks like it's the LXDE desktop, the old LXDE desktop. So that's very interesting. Desktop preferences. Okay, so what do we got here? Accessories. Things that we can use. Calculator. Um, Gini. Um, graphical disk map. GTK hash. Midnight commander and screenshot graphics. Color selector. Document viewer. Image viewer. MT paint. Internet. Desktop sharing. Firefox, uh, Modem Manager, Remina, Connect to Remote Desktops, Transmission, UGET, Office Document Viewer, Installing Printing System, Install LibreOffice Install Printing System, and that's an issue. Dead Beef, Music Player, GUVC View for Webcam, Simple Screen Recorder, and VLC media player. Then we have preferences, additional drivers, system tools. Yeah, so that uh, install LibreOffice, that, what's that do? Okay. LibreOffice Fresh. Let's close that. Have they got a synaptic package manager anywhere that'll be in system tools synaptic package manager so let's do a search for LibreOffice and then we have LibreOffice so if we was to uh, mark that for install mark that so what have we got there 66 to install slash upgrade zero to remove 350 megabytes will be used so that's hit the apply button and have a look what it tells us there. 
So 358 megabytes of space will be used. 93 megabytes have to be downloaded. Okay, so that's that's not too bad. Um, so we don't have to install the whole thing. Looks like they may have already had some um, libraries and other things in there for LibreOffice already. That's not a huge download for LibreOffice. Now this is the, uh, you know, this varies quite often actually, I must say, the, the size of this. So that brings us up to, uh, what is it? We downloaded for 789.6 the ISO, say 790. So that brings us up to 884 roughly. So we're under 900 megabytes, including installing LibreOffice. That's pretty good. So we have a document viewer, image viewer, MT Paint, internet, we have Firefox. We've got this desktop sharing, uh, remote desktop application here as well. Transmission and NuGet. The, ins the option to install LibreOffice Libre here. We've got Dead Beef, GUVC View, um, simple screen recorder, VLC. So I think we, we have everything we need. The only thing I can't see is a text editor, or is that Gini? Is that a text editor? It can be, can't it? Fast and lightweight IDE. I don't know what's IDE mean. <laughs> I think this is more for coding than anything, but it probably can be used as a text editor. So 93.8 megabytes, let's cancel that. Let's edit and unmark all. Let's have a look at what this option, where this option takes us to. And let's just see what this is going to do. So we'll, we'll say yes on that one. Uh, I don't know if it's going to install or, or not. Let's just have a look, see what it does. So it's updating the repositories. Hopefully it asks me yes or no. So what's it saying here? Need to get 112 megabytes. So there must have been some upgrades in there as well. So that's two megabytes over. Are we worried about two, meg two megabytes? But that's probably including, so we're two megabytes over, only just, and that's, um, but we can get away with it if we use Synaptic, but there's some upgrades in there. So we're, we're now coming back to that same old scenario of how much is this person going to be using every month? Is this a monthly thing? This is the information I don't have. So I would have to think that at 93 megabytes um, through um, Synaptic Package Manager was um, more than acceptable. So if we wanted a, a simple text editor like gedit and we was to install something like that, let's just check that out that would need to get 1.152 megabytes of archives, which is nothing really. So the applications to install LibreOffice in Synaptic Package Manager and a, and a simple text editor, if, if unless you're willing to use a Gini, then that's fine. That's there to be used. It looks like a text editor anyway. I've never really used it, to be honest. It's been in a lot of distros, though, I must say. So more than acceptable within 900 megabytes. And then I'd have to think you've got your ongoing 900 every month, maybe. You would have to. It, that, let's, let's look at this. You would have to have your 900 megabytes every month, wouldn't you? You cannot have an operating system without maintaining it and updating security and, and so forth. And if you're going to have an operating system, are you on the internet with it? Or are you just using it for home purpose? This is another question, isn't it? <laughs> the questions keep getting raised. You know, the other questions would be, um, you're downloading the ISO with your mobile data. Are you then removing that ISO off your mobile and writing it to USB, installing it on a computer that doesn't have internet access. So the computer's actually not accessing internet. That could be another scenario too. So this person might only be using it just for home purpose. 
that that could be another scenario. But definitely having a look at this, besides the upgrades there, because there definitely were some upgrades. Let's just check that out because we haven't installed anything. So let's clear the screen there. And let's just do a sudo apt update on its own just to see what's going on there. And then we do an upgrade. And then we'll get to see what's going on with the upgrade. If I can spell it right. Okay, so we need to get 324 megabytes of archives. So there's 374 megabytes of upgrade there. Mm. That comes back to the scenario of waiting for a more updated ISO, doesn't it? I don't believe this ISO is that old anyway, although I did download it quite a while ago. So this might have had some more upgrades since then. So we're probably coming up to a couple of months since I've sort of done a lot of recording. So this recording is up to date. So the upgrades may have been a lot more since I've downloaded that ISO. If we take on board installing LibreOffice and a simple G, um, G edit text editor, then you're under 900 megabytes. Maybe the upgrades are a part of a monthly maintaining issue of, of a ongoing 900 megabytes per month, possibly. But definitely I can see run to could definitely work under 900 megabytes. And it only just comes in there. Um, the other scenario would be if we installed, it really doesn't matter what we install as light, how light it is at this point, because the upgrades are throwing us over the 900 megabytes anyway, if we consider the upgrades. But if you wanted something more lightweight and you just need a Word application and possibly a spreadsheet, these two lightweight uh, applications here would work no problem. So let's see how much they are to install. Need to get 20 megabytes of archives. So that brings it right down. Still doesn't allow for the upgrade, but regarding running a system and having it lightweight and way under 900, well not way under, but I mean a lot further away from 900 than what LibreOffice would be, then we're looking pretty good. And let's have a quick look at HTOP. So run to light 20.04.1 is running 241 megabytes. That's off a fresh boot, fairly low. That's not too bad at all. So yeah, a couple of scenarios there. I don't know what you guys think, but um, I believe that um, we would have to take the upgrades out of this, I believe. And regardless whether any distro I've looked at leading up to this point, whether I said it may not have um, worked because of upgrades, I would have to think that if the user wanted any of those distros, I'm sure they would. M most of them could probably work, to be honest. The command line install ones might be a little bit different, even though I said that uh, he's, I don't think he's, I wouldn't think he's downloading I did say before he's probably he could be downloading the ISO from his phone. I don't think so. Probably he's probably tethering off the phone. I would have to think, and he's running the system off the phone and installing off the phone. So you could do a command line install or just a normal install, and just tether off the phone. I think you would have to have an existing operating system to to be able to do these things. So the user might be changing over from a Mac or from a Windows. I'm not sure, and maybe running an operating system, tethering off the phone, downloading the ISOs, and then writing them to USB, and then installing them, maybe dual booting or just or replacing what they've got. So what do you guys think? I think we should disregard upgrades. I think um, the rule of thumb here would have to be the ISO size and the applications needed for daily use. I think that's a fair scenario. Upgrades are to the side. They're a maintenance type thing for the distro itself. And you could you could install an, a distro, run it without any problems, and then just upgrade when you've got more data available. 
I think that's the best scenario to take here, to be honest. And uh, run two, quite a nice lightweight distro there. Something I probably didn't show is it, it uses the PC Man FM file manager and the LX panel. That, that's what it's doing. And it's, it's running open box. You probably would have seen from the inf information sheet that I normally put up just before getting into it. So that was run to light 20.04.1. Definitely another contender for the lightweight distro challenge for sure. Taken out the taken away the upgrade scenario. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.